Hello, my name is Nicholas Santillo. And this is Shantre Tram. And we're here to introduce organization units in DHIS2. So, we looked already at the three core dimensions required to create a report, and today mm -hmm. we want to look at... Where? Mm -hmm, which are represented by organization units. Now, organization units exist in a hierarchy in DHIS2, and you may have seen that if you've got a training land or, or any of the other systems. But why the hierarchy, and what are we doing with it? Mm -hmm. So as you can see during this di with this diagram, um, the data is aggregated up, and the system automatically does this, but your part is to create a structure mm -hmm. um, to communicate that to DHIS2 so that it can do that for you. Exactly. So the system will automatically take the data wherever it's entered, and it will aggregate it at that next level up. So you can make as many levels as you'd like, uh, and they will represent different areas in your region or regions that you work in. And of course, in this, I'm using region to be any size of space. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what that might look like, this hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So here we have an example of Canada uh, broken into provinces. Obviously, there are more than just two. And the provinces right. broken into districts. Obviously, once again, more than just two. And then you'd have cities and towns inside of those and mm -hmm. going lower and lower. We're specifically focused on schools for this one. Though. Mm -hmm. And so what's really important uh, to look at here is the, the question of where are you collecting the the data mm -hmm. and then how do you aggregate the data or disaggregate it ge geographically um, and based on your answers you would create a structure something similar to this mm -hmm. and you would also then be able to relate your org units to a series of coordinates so that you can actually map your data in the system's GIS yeah now there also is a, a way to connect different organization units or areas of data collection or um, any of these different regions in a different way that's not purely geographical. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that now. So this is an example of a group set. And a group set has a series of groups of organization units that can be related uh, by type or by uh, anything you want to come up with that's not geographical. Mm -hmm. So in this example, our group set is the type of school. And we've got three groups here, and I'm sure there are others, but we have public, private, and alternative. And then below that, that's broken down or disaggregated further into um, individual org units or facilities, uh, such as down to mm -hmm. secondary school and so on. In this case, we're looking at uh, the facilities. The org units are the level we would call facilities. But in the next slide, we'll look at uh, a group of org units that are actually uh, small areas of a province, not specific locations. So here's an image from our GIS app, and this shows the regions that make up the District of Central Ontario. This is a group that we decided to create earlier, and now we've just pulled it up uh, in our GIS app. They are at similar levels in terms of the hierarchy of org units, but now we can pull them up to see them in a report all at once. Keep in mind that org units need to be grouped in order to be shown in a GIS. For any other form of report, such as pivot tables, line graphs, uh, you can just simply select the group rather than selecting org units separately. Uh, so it, it'll save you a lot of time, a lot more efficient. All right, so the next couple of, of slides will be your usual quiz. Good luck. All right, this has been Nicholas Santillo. And Shantari Tram. And thanks so much for watching.